here today for a reason, for a purpose. And I'm glad that he has. What a good God that we serve. What a God, great opportunity. Anybody here today know that God is loving you? Anybody? Amen. 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 Why boast thyself in mischief, oh my man? The goodness of God endured continually.
Amen. 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 And uh, I tell you, and, and here's kind of what happens. They'll cast out there once or twice, and the water gets to talking to them. <laughs> and they're like, I ain't caught anything yet. Let me go swimming. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim's like, they don't bother me none. I'll fish down here. And uh, that's the way it goes, ain't it? But, uh, you know, that way it's a win-win. Everybody's enjoying and having a good time. Friday night, 4 o'clock. Young people, y'all come on in and be part of that. Now, the 22nd to the 24th, be here at 11 o'clock, young people. And uh, you'll make your way across the highway over here. And going over to uh, uh, Woods Reservoir, there's a, a camping spot over there that we've uh, got rented. It's got four cabins. Now, here's the deal. He said, well, I'm not going. Through whose eyes? <laughs> Through whose eyes? I don't believe anybody is in here that's over Abraham's age. <laughs> Come on, amen. And so Abraham, you're young. Sure enough. And we keep going on that list. You know, if you want to, you can go and say, well, you know, I'm pretty close to Abraham's age. A thief's not. I can do this all day long. I can play this game all day long. You see, you're still young. And if you'd like to come out and participate in that thing, what we'll do, uh, like we did last year, Brother Tim, we'll, you know, we'll be cooking out that night and, and having a good time. I'll bring the boat back out there and we'll have a little fun uh, out on the water. Just having a good time with fellowship and all like that. The 22nd through the 24th, and that'll be over here at Woods Reservoir. Like I said, just right across the highway. But looking forward to these things. Then, we're also getting ready for camp, and uh, we'll get those handouts uh, for the day here real soon. Uh, for the so we get all that taken care of so these young people are lined out. But uh, looking forward to camp this year and being back over there doing that. There's so much to rejoice over and thank God for. Yep. And, and let's don't forget, if we won't, end of the month, last Tuesday of the month, what do we do? Put Bibles together. Yep. We'll meet here at 9 o'clock and we'll make our way over the Bible barn. And I'm looking forward to that too. So these are the things that we've got out in front of us. We're grateful for what God blessed us with. Amen. What a great opportunity. Jackson, see you up here this morning. What did they do? Did they like some of you in and say you've got to go over and help you take the offering this morning? I know you won't mind, and I know you won't mind, and that's God bless you on the offering this morning. 
I'm telling you. Can you tell me what the universe is like? It would do us all some good to read Job chapter 38, 39, 40. Job, after he had that consultation with his buddies and everything, now all of a sudden he's kind of got to the place. He's got a little haughty, he's got a little, got a little puffed up with himself, and God draws him back in and he says, Hey! You tell me you've got some understanding. You speak to me. Where was you when this went up? And where was you when that happened? Yeah. And Job had nothing to say. Right. Because in all the reality is it's all in the hands of God. Amen. Last night, you laid down on your fella to sleep and life went on. I've seen those foolish billboards saying, where's God? Is he sleeping? Well, I've got news for you. He's not slumbering. He is not sleeping. Mm. He's wide awake. He knows exactly what's going on. That's right. Zechariah chapter 4. Are you with me this morning? Verse number 1. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is waking out of his sleep. Said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick of gold and a bowl upon the top of it, and seven lamps thereon. And Seven pints to the seven lamps uh, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it. One upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side of the, thereof. And, uh, so I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that I talked with, with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? I said, no, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the uh, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Say not by mind, yes. nor by power, but by my spirit, Amen. saith the Lord of hosts. Yes. Who art thou, O great man, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, when the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. Thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. You know, when we start to think about what God has allotted us to do, what a great God we serve. Amen. Psalms 50 verse 1 says, The mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken and called the earth for the rising of the sun until the going down thereof. I read my Bible. And it starts like this. In the beginning, God. Amen. I've even read the last of the book. And it ends with God. Amen. It starts with God. It ends with God. Amen. And by the way, he's in control of all things in between. Yes. Amen. What a mighty God I serve. What a great God. What a great opportunity. Amen. Hey, it's God is the reason why. Yep. Now, we're going to some things this morning. John 8, verse number 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. What he's telling him, the, the, the people here, is to say, Look, y'all are looking to Abraham. But before Abraham was, I am. Yep. I am. Yep. There's a lot of people 
you'll get to talk to, and they'll tell you all these different books out there. This group of people were supposed to be at this period of time, and those groups of people were supposed to be at that period of time. I talk to those people, Brother John, when they say, oh, the Samaritan tablets, they predict your Bible. No, they don't. Oh, you yeah, do. How do you know? Well, Carbon Day. I shared with y'all before. Carbon Day is Paul. One of the most prestigious scientists, archaeologists of our day. Matter of fact, he's the one that identified David Perez when they took him and went up the way down there. Hey, he's the one that the, identified the bodies there in uh, Oklahoma when the, when the body took place there. He's one of the number one archaeologists, one of the uh, anthropologists of our country or of our world, Dr. Bass. Yeah. You know what Dr. Bass said? Carbon dating is flawed. That's right. Mm -hmm. Carbon dating is flawed. You see, they like to put dates and times on things that they really don't know anything about. That's right. Let me put it this way. <clears throat> All we know is to hear now. That's right. There's many of us can't really go beyond a hundred years back in any accuracy of a lot of that stuff too. Amen. We have to hear that. You say, well, how do you know your Bible is real? How do you know the Bible is true? I think for asking that it's proven so time and time again. Mm -hmm. yes. The day I got saved, God began to open my eyes and begin to see things differently. Right. And over time, He has revealed Himself time and time again. Amen. Matter of fact, it's why all these others try to attack and come after the Word of God. And it's why the Word of God can stand alone for itself. Like God said in Joshua 24, verse 15, choose you this day whom you will serve. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. If it seems any you will serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Hey, make a decision. Find out what side you're on. Mm -hmm. huh. John 1 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. Mm -hmm. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it's in the beginning with God. We find out a few verses later that the Word was made flesh and walked among us. Well, who was flesh and walked among us? The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hmm. Go with me to Exodus chapter 17. Begin to understand. That all things evolve around God. It's all because of God's creation. God's ability to give me what I have. Every night I lay my head down on the pillow at night. Before I close my eyes, I'm talking to the Lord. Yeah, you know why? Because I can't control what happens while I'm asleep. Matter of fact, I can't control what happens while I'm awake. What makes you think I can do it while I'm sleeping? I trust in Him. Right. I look to Him. I depend upon Him. Yeah. And the more and more I understand this, you know why? I get weak. Yes. I get weak. My body used to be where I would take and take a leap off of here and hit that ground and wouldn't even bite an eye about it. I don't jump off of nothing anymore. <laughs> huh? How many of y'all have legs and quakes? How many of y'all uh, squeak when you walk? Yeah, yeah. Things are popping and bearing up. It hasn't always been that way. Has it always been that way? Exodus chapter 17, verse number 10. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses scaring in her. Now here's the deal. Young people, pay attention. Old people, pay attention. Here's the deal. Moses is getting old. Yep. And he can't do what he wants to do. But what he can do is powerful. It's needful. Amen. It's very important. So here's Joshua, that young guy. That young buck that's out there on the battlefield. Amen. Hey, Joshua is carrying out what 
what Moses told him to do. He's acting upon the old dude's words. And he's out there fighting the battle against Amalek. And he came to pass when Moses held up his hand. That Israel prevailed, and when he laid down his hand, Amalek prevailed. I don't want to draw that picture. Yes, amen. But one thing I found along the journey, victory can get tiresome at times. We want to take the hand in our arms, and well, I just can't take it anymore, preacher. I can't fight this stuff anymore. I can't go anymore. Read on. But Moses' hands were dead. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on it. You don't understand this. Get a hold of this. Think about what he's saying here. They took a stone and put it under him. Who does it say? Read on. Y'all so anxious to get to the end of the story. His hands were heavy. Put stone under him. He sat there on, and Aaron and her stayed up his hands. Amen. Aaron and her yep. stayed up his hands. Amen. Iron sharpened iron. Amen. Hmm. No man lives to himself, no man dies to himself. Hmm. Let us, let us, let us. There's a value to us. There's a value to us. He's tired. And Aaron and her stayed on his hands. The one on one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down the sun. When Joshua discovered Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword, and the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Huh. Don't just write it down and tell it to that young crowd. Yep. Because one day the young crowd will be the old crowd and there's going to be a new young crowd that needs to know the story. Yeah. It needs to be passed up. It's up to Joshua and his ears. Write it for a memorial. And rehearse it in the ears of Joshua for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. And by the way, that is God's banner. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. What the saying here is, when God declares it, it's so. Now, why is that important today? All these years later, why so 4,000 years later is that an important factor? Because he's the same God. And when he gives his word, he keeps it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Huh. First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. God, my banner, Jehovah, he see. Verse 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some should depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Yep. Somebody 
chance that the devil's coming out of the closet. Yep. Yep. It's not by chance these were the dark days in which we didn't fathom we'd ever see. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. In the latter time, some should depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. Anybody hear any lies this week? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Manipulation. Yeah. Huh? I'm here to tell you, you get on your TV, you want to lie to it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Yeah. <clears throat> God says it's better than the millstone we hung about the neck than to cast into the sea. Right. Yep. Yeah. He made us smart. Yeah. Right. That's right. That's right. They right. believe they're doing it because they don't fear God. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. I go back a few years. There was these pickup trucks running around. Had this little boy on the back up right there. He's taking the bathroom. He's using the bathroom right there. Y'all remember seeing that little truck running around? <laughs> had a little picture and everything. And then they started sticking a little slogan up there saying, no beer. No beer. That's a problem. That's right. Yeah. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of it. Amen. Yeah. We need to have a little more fear. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You see, we teach children as they're growing up the fear of the fire. That's why we smack that in. Not because we want to abuse them, don't want the contrary. We love them. We don't want them to get burned. That's right. Me as a father, I rear my children because I want them to do right and I want them to obey. I want them to be good children as they grow up into good young 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 adults. I need to I need to their uh, adulthood as, as you will. You say, why would you do a thing like that? Because daddy, unlike God, can't always be. There's times that I'm not there. There's times I can't be there. And when I can't be there, I want God's hand upon their life. That's right. That's right. Yep. See, these lies and hypocrisies have their conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving with them which believe. quite understand that passage of scripture right there. But in the last few years, when they start to tell you that these animals out here are part of the problem of global warming. Yeah. <laughs> and we need to do away with them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Mama said if the idiot up the street jumps off her, I'm going to the idiot part. But she said if the guy up the street jumped off the, off the roof, uh, should you also jump off the roof? No, Mama. I think it's in my state to it, Mama. <laughs> yes, I deserve the idiot because it takes an idiot to do a thing. Her point was what I made. We don't just follow them and do what they do just because, unfortunately, right then, a lot of people are. This idea of uh, meats are bad, not according to God's work. Matter of fact, I'm here to tell you we got uh, Fourth of July coming up, Brother John. And by the grace of God, I'll have me a word by the same thing right there. Amen. <laughs> And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. What the rest of y'all don't like real life? <laughs> what do y'all like? You like real life? Baby bites? All right. All right. I can handle that too. Sure enough. My point is, read the verses. Yes. yes. Forbidding to marry and commanding them to say for me, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving. Then which believe in no truth. The flip side of that 
say is that there are those that don't believe and don't know the truth. Well, that runs right a parallel, Brother John, to where he says in the 23rd Psalm, he prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> Some of all that ain't really clicked with you just yet. It'll sink in here in a moment. Amen. I'm going to tell you. It also parallels what he talks about in these days, which we find ourselves that the good man of the house will eat when others want to. Well, what makes him a good man of the house? Well, what did Jesus say about that? When they called him good master, he said, Why call that me good? There's one that's good. That's God. Amen. You know what makes me good? God. Yeah, amen. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Look, brothers and sisters, the fact that we walk with God, the fact that we have God, the fact that he's in our heart, he will, let, he will provide us a table when nobody else can eat. That's right. Amen. 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 How in the world can we get that preacher? How in the world can we receive that? Elijah. Y'all remember Elijah for three and a half years <clears throat> was down there by the brook eating from the king's table. Profitable in all things. 
having the promise of the life that now lives, but of that which is to come. <coughs> There's so much I'm looking forward to. There's so much I'm anticipating. There's so much I'm longing for, but not yet. I have a role to play. I have an opportunity. I need to be serving God. Why? Because there's a lost and dying world out there. That's right. This is faithful. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we will labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Yes. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Trust in God, relying upon him, yeah. understanding what God's doing here. Yes. Now, Exodus chapter 14, go for it. Exodus chapter 14. Where are we living at? Where are we living at? Somebody shout it out. Where are we at? Where are we at? Right here. No, no, no. no. Where, are Where are we at? Esther. Say it. Esther. 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 Before we move down here. Before we move down here. And he was squirming about it. She was all nerved out about it. Wondering about it. All those questions she was having. And one day he showed, me right, he showed her right the scriptures. Look at it with me. Verse 13. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you should see them again, no more, forever. Be still, Esther. Be still. Know who God is. Understand who God is. Be still, Esther. Understand that God's got this thing. Every one of us last night, we laid our heads. God was at work. Amen. God was doing things. God was touching lives. God was doing things. God does not need me. I need God. Amen. Amen. Verse 1. And I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked and behold. There came four chariots out from a 20 foot I'm looking at. Oh, here we go. Well, I did not. I skipped ahead. Chapter 4. What word am I looking at over there? That was really Zachariah? Yeah, no, I'm not Zachariah. I'm just chapter 6. I'm on chapter 6. What be chapter 4? That's not. When I look at it, I'm like, that ain't right. I ain't reading the right thing. See what it is? Four six is my key verse. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. I'm on six. And I'm like, whoa, get back here, Shane. <coughs> verse one. An angel that talked with me came again and walked me uh, and waked me as a man that is waking out of sleep. You know, in 1 Kings chapter number 19 and verse number 5, look at it with me. And as he lay and slept under a funeral tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, What is it? And he looked, and behold, there was Okay, baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head, and he did eat and drink and lay him down again. And the angel of the Lord came and again the second time and touched 
Sam said, arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. I want you to understand that both times he was sleeping, and both times he had food on the fire, and both times the provisions were right there as God had provided for him. And all he did was sleep. <clears throat> Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11, verse 2. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with them, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, and eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, Now, they're upset because Peter went down to these uh, uncircumcised people, these heathenistic people, these wicked people that they did not. Peter reminded them of something. Gave them a message right here. Said, I was in the city of Joppa, praying and in a trance. That's the way he said, I was sleeping. I saw a vision, dreaming. A certain vessel descended as it was, as it had been a great sheet, uh, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which when I had fastened my eyes, I considered, saw a four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay me. And I say, Not so, Lord. For nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. Smell a little self righteousness. <laughs> Smell some arrogance. We not understand where God found us. Where God got us. Read on. Nothing common or unclean. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed, that call not thou come. This was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. Behold, immediately there were three men already coming to unto the house where I was, sent from Sicily unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them. Understand this. Now, y'all help me out. What does it mean when something's capitalized? Are we talking about any spirit? Are we talking about the Spirit? The Spirit. Huh? I understand that. When the Lord starts knocking on that door and says, hey, do this. I understand who it is that's knocking on that door. That's right. Baby, go with them. Nothing doubt. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. He showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send me to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then we heard out the word of the Lord. How he said, John indeed baptized with water, that ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much as God gave them the light gift, as he did unto us, as he did unto us, as they got, we've got the same very spirit that they got, we've got. We believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, that was, what was I, that I could withstand God. 
You see what God sometimes does is He comes in and He rocks our worlds. Yes. Yes. A lot of times we've got these little thoughts and our ideas in our heads and we think we've got all these things nailed down. We think we've got all these things figured out. Like a timeline. <laughs> this is going to happen and that's going to happen and bam, we're going to be out of here. You don't have to worry about all this other stuff. Let me ask you a question. How's that working out for you? <laughs> I want to remind you what the Bible says. It's not what man says, what the Bible says. Judgment begins where? <laughs> Out of the house of God. We understand this. This we all do. And now as we're seeing what we're seeing in all this wickedness and evilness that's going on, and, hey, you and I have an opportunity to be understand. God's got us here for a purpose and a reason. That's right. Amen. That's right. Peter's learning the lesson right here. He said, God gave them the same spirit that he gave me. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was that I should quit, that, that I could withstand God. When they heard these things, they held their peace. For by God saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life? And the answer is yes. 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 You see, I got another short of here, and I'm going to hold off and get it tonight. I want you to see something or another. If you go through at your Bible and study, every time man was asleep and God was already lining things out and organizing things and taking care of things and then when all was said and done, he woke mankind up and said, hey, now it's your time. Amen. Now it's your role. And what got me to thinking along these lines, I began to ask the question of myself. There's so much in my life that I spend sleeping. But there's so much of my life that I'm unaware of that God's doing things that I can't even fathom and comprehend. And the more I understand this yet, the more I understand that God's in control. Yes. Amen. Amen. And God don't need me. <clears throat> but I need him. Amen. So when I lay down on my bed at night, I go right off to sleep. Because soon I understand who's watching over me. When I get my car and drive down the road, I do it with a smile upon my face, Mr. Claudia, because I know God will get me to my destination. Amen. You see, I don't trust in James Scott. I don't rely upon James Scott. I understand, I understand James Scott falls short, but I know that God goes above and beyond anything I say or think or do. I'm here to tell you it's a great place to be. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, let me ask you a question as we're talking today. And by the way, the message is entitled, Why While I Was a and by the way, we've been asleep a long time in America. Yes. Washington, D.C. doing what they do. It's an awful preacher. They've been doing it a long time. Yeah. We've been sleeping. We've been sleeping. Yes. And now we woke. Oh, yeah. Saw a video the other day where a guy had fallen asleep behind the wheel. Why are you sleeping? Wasn't nothing down on that highway that bothered him. <laughs> so when he opened his eyes and saw a truck coming. Wow! <laughs> that is on video. Yeah. He got scared. <laughs> what do you want? What about when you were asleep? He actually drove better while he was sleeping. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself as I'm watching the video, I'm thinking, don't wake up. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that God wants us to wake. Amen. Yes. If the Bible says it's now high time to wake. That's right. Right now, it's time for us to open our eyes and see what's going on. And it's time for us to behold what God's got us here for such a time as this. 
We have an opportunity, brothers and sisters. And it ain't time for us to go back to sleep. It's time for us to be attentive to the things of God. That's right. The last thing I want you to focus on, look with me, verse number 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. When you get God's word, and God's word is guiding you and directing you. This is what he's saying here. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You know, Sherry, how we're going to get this thing done? Not by mind. Not by power. So by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. I'm going to look under the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. Amen. John, you step out there and you go to God in prayer to stop the wind. Wind is a representation of the Holy Spirit of God. John 3, the wind goes where it listens. Don't know when she comes and where it goes. So is the Spirit, as it says right there. Hey, that Spirit of God's at work. And you ought to be at work in our hearts. Yeah. Not by might, not by power, but by God's Spirit. Amen. You know what that tells me? That tells me that the least amongst us, the least amongst us is capable. So how do you know that? Well, David, the little dude, yeah. took down the light, the yeah. big guy. That's right. The widow, her two mites, was much more than all those others that had big old bunch of cats. That little lad, two fishes, five loaves of bread. Right. Yeah. Fed the woman to God likes to use little things. To reveal his power. Amen. Gideon. He called him a mighty man of power. Gideon says, hey, I'm a little bit. Oh, you're not seeing it the right way, Gideon. Oh, my family, we're the least of them. You're not seeing it the right way, Gideon. I want you to get all these people together and bring them down here. I'm going to show you who I want you to go back with. And they did. They, they came out in droves. Man, they going to come down there. One by one, he began to dwindle them down. Each time God said, no, there's too many of them. What? Do you not see the army God that we're about to take on? Do you not understand the battle? Hey, nobody understands it better than God. You know what I'm going for, God? Do you not understand? I got cancer, that nasty cancer stuff. You think you're the only one that's ever had? One by one, it finally got down there to 300. He said, now you can go to the battle. Amen. But you're not going to go down there taking all the weapons of your warfare that you normally do. I want you to take a picture and a light inside that picture. Yeah. And when the time is right, I want you to bring that picture. I want you to shout the glory of the Lord in the And now, I want you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That's right. Amen. They went down there and they did that. And would you believe they didn't even have to draw swords. That's right. <clears throat> they were killing each other off down there. Yep. Yep. They just got to watch the show. Amen. You know, brothers and sisters, it's the same God yesterday, today, as he is forever. Right. And when we get to understand God doesn't need me, but God's at work on my behalf while I am sleeping. Yeah. I'm here to tell you this day, I sleep a whole lot better knowing that. Yes, that's right. And I promise you, you will too. Yeah. Understanding how God operates and the fact that he loves you beyond all measure. 
and all the different things, you got to promise you, we go into the other side. Amen. And he will deliver us in the process. That's right. Let's pray. Lord, if you bow, I want you to come to the front. Thank you for the privilege. I'm so grateful for your hand. Lord, knowing that I do sleep a lot better, understanding that I do walk a lot better, and Lord, seeing what I see, I make a greater impact because my heart is strong. I pray, Lord, you speak to each and every one of you this morning. Bring us to our needs. I will be up in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All stand for people coming. Do you understand? Yeah, you got to focus. Come on, run right in. Come on, run right in.
Amen. 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 Finish. Finish. Amen.